Michelle Gardner errors in a Republic. Kenny, can you walk us through your plans for quarterback? Because we thought it was going to be Jaden, and then they were both going to play, and then that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't want to get too into to one piece of it. Obviously, Jaden was going into the week as the starter, um, and then uh, you know actually it was reported on he was late to a meeting, and uh, we have policies and. One thing we're not going to do is I'm not going to be a coward. If I say there's a standard for the program, there's going to be a standard for the program. And uh, whether that hurts us or doesn't hurt us, that's the foundation we're trying to set. And uh, then Trenton uh, was going to go, and he got sick. So his brother started puking, and then he started puking. Uh, and he had – so we tried to get him back, but he just he was just said, I was, I'm sick, I'm puking. Uh, I can't, I can't go. So we then went into the wildcat mode, mold there, uh, for to start it up. How soon before the game was it that he said he couldn't go? Uh, on the field. Like right, literally, is your. Uh, no, 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 no. Dur during pregame. Oh. Okay. So we, so we knew. So we got to be able to put together a, a pretty scri scripted drive from the uh, the Hellcat uh, deal, and uh, try to put our players in the best position to be successful. Kenny, uh, Chris Carbon said it was first. Um, they kind of exploited you uh, in the secondary with um, their approach in the first half. What were some of the factors that you saw there? Yeah, we couldn't create a pass rush with four. And if you can't create a pass rush with four and you play good wideouts, uh, it's hard. So you know, all year, pass rush has been one of our top things. Uh, you know, early in the year, we were allowed, we were, you know, able to scheme up more pass rush pressures. Uh, but at the end of the year, teams just said, no, we'll just let two or three guys get into route combinations and we'll max pro you uh, and play that game. So, you know, we got to be able to try to rush the pass with four. And then those wideouts are good and, you know, they got open. It sounds boring and simple, but simple as that. You give a, a good quarterback enough time to send two NFL wideouts down the field and you can't hit them, uh, they're going to get open. So uh, we got to go back to work, try to get better in the off season, and we will, and uh, go win next year. Kenny Hoder, Bino Devils Digest. I know you talked all year long about the buying into the culture and what, and what you are trying to establish. <coughs> You're obviously not one bit, you know, satisfied with uh, the performance and, and the um, and the result, but the fight that you showed in the second half, is that maybe just another testament of the culture and the fight of this team, you know, never wavering? Yeah, I mean... I mean, I didn't take this job and expect to go win eight games. This was, yes. So the buy-in, what we're doing, the direction we're going, 100%. I mean, it's the direction that needs to be headed. It's what needed to be done this year. Uh, even though it's not fun to lose games like this, it's not fun for all this stuff, sometimes it's needed. Sometimes you have to hit rock bottom to bounce back up. And where we were as a program – uh, in the direction we're going, I have 1,000% confidence uh, that the ball's bouncing up, not down. But I do believe you, we finally hit rock bottom. I, I think any, everybody knows that. And then once you hit it, you start going up. And I believe that's what we're doing. Coach Michael Carrison, you know, pitch fork lunch. I know you talked about obviously guys battling all year, but to focus on a guy like uh, Joey Ramos, I mean, on a senior day, just – Obviously, he's moving on, but, I mean, what has he meant to this team and just the grit that he showed all year? Oh, yeah, he's been battling through, I mean, God knows what, just to fight. So he's a competitor. He's a, competitor. He's a fighter. I mean, he's. we went out there. We ran the ball pretty well today. Uh, you know, the game got away from us, so we couldn't continue to run the ball like that, which was unfortunate. But uh, we did those. the whole line, you know, getting Sione back was really good. We had, you know, seven going into the game, which was, you know, a bonus for us, to be honest. And uh, I thought those those guys played hard, leading with Joey. Uh, Sammy Newt, Devil's Digest. Coach Trey Brown came in here and said that this was the one culture he felt he could buy into in the five or so cultures he's been a part of. How important is it to you that you got to get, you got through to a veteran player that uh, has experienced a lot in his culture, and your culture was represented? Yeah, like I told the guys, I said, you know, everybody out of this room, is going to look at this year and they'll be like, oh, it's a failure. 
oh, that's one of the worst junior and senior classes that have ever come through ASU. And I said, but the people in this room are going to look at this room, and I'm going to look at this room as you guys come back as the people who set the foundation for where you're going. And when you guys come back and watch us play in two years, three years, four years, 20 years, you guys are going to get to say, we were the ones who had to drag people to be there five minutes early. We were the ones who had to say, yes, you have to sit the, sit somebody because he was late to something. We were the ones who made the sacrifices. And that's what I told him is, proud of the group, uh, for being the, the people who started to lay the foundation. And even though the outside world won't appreciate it, I do. Bobby. Hey, uh, Kenny, what do the next couple weeks kind of look like for you and the staff in terms of reflecting and learning maybe from this year and then starting to turn the page? <laughs> yeah, I have exit meetings with uh, all the players and staff uh, starting Monday. So 180, 190 meetings, whatever that plays out to be uh, for the next four days. And then uh, fundraise. Like, I can go recruit. <laughs> it's cool. I'm going to go fundraise because uh, that's what the name of the game is nowadays. So what are we doing? I'm going to go and fundraise, fundraise, fundraise. Staff's going to go out and recruit players. I'll go out and recruit some players, but I'm, I'm recruiting people who want this place to win as well, and that has nothing to do with players. And uh, that's one of the most the biggest factors in, in college football right now. And, you know, that's my job as the head coach. It's not just the coach. It's not just to lead a culture. It's not just to get people to graduate. It's not just to have the highest GPA they've ever had here uh, the first spring we were here. It's not just that. It's all inclusive. And the longer I'm the head coach here in year two and three, there are no excuses. There's never excuses because that's where college football is different than the NFL. It's different because you pick everything that happens in your program you're in control of. So when we're in year two and we're in year three, when you're in year four, everything is 100% a reflection of what I've allowed to happen. And uh, that starts with donors and fundraising and getting people involved. So i got to go do that this week. Uh, Tia Reed, uh, Cronkite Sports Network. Coach, what were some of the adjustments that you guys made uh, on the defensive side of the ball in the second half that allowed you to maybe slow them down a little bit, maybe bring a little bit of morale back? Yeah, I mean, uh, to be honest, I think our guys just kept fighting. The calls were the same. Uh, calls were the same. A few more, you know, pressures, single backer pressures uh, to the back a little bit uh, to maybe cut down the back side of the zone or squeeze it uh, with the backside end, which hit, a, which hit a few times, which was a positive for us. But... Uh, you know, so I would say more five-man pressures just because we didn't get home in the first half with the four-man rush. So, you know, if you can't get home with four-man rush and uh, you can't cover seven with four, or my fault, four with seven, right, then there's an issue. And those wideouts are good. They run fast. And uh, they get crossers on you vertically down the field. So we had to make an adjustment to try to pressure a little bit more. Coach Caleb Campetto, Devils Digest. From the final whistle to when you stepped in here right now, has there anything? Has there, there been anything distinctive of it's already caught your eye that starting Monday that things are going to start getting moving again and, and things are just going to start to take a step forward and get back to work? Yeah, uh, the guys that want to come back to be a part of the program next year, you can just see it. Like You can see it. They're not wavering in terms of the direction we're going. They know the direction's set right. They believe in the direction, and they're like, okay, this is what it takes. Like what we did this last year, all right, it wasn't good enough, so let's get better. And they're going to help us bring players into the program to help us be better. So that's what I noticed after the game is there was a lot of guys that are, that are pissed off, that don't know what it looks like yet, but we're learning what it looks like and what it takes. And that takes time, and it sucks. It's not fun. I keep saying it. It's miserable. Like you think I like coming up here and talk about how we just lost Territorial Cup? It's miserable. But what are you going to do? Go back to work. It's part of the process. It sucks. But it is what it is. We're going to get that thing back. And when we get it back, it's going to be in a home that's built right. Doug, Doug Franz Unplugged, WTSMTV.com. Kenny, you mentioned fundraise, fundraise, fundraise. You are from here. You know everything about this school. You started off by saying activate the valley. How would you rate how the Valley did in year one and what, what, how much effort work do you need to put in to get 2024 what you want it to be? Yeah, I think uh, I'm happy with the, with the fans, with the support from that standpoint. Uh, I think, you know, in the last two weeks it's gotten better. 
But, you know, at the end of the day, this is it's a tough deal because the Valley, I'm from here, so I can say anything I want about the Valley, right? Because I'm one of them. I'm talking about myself. Is we're front runners, right? We love watching winners. Well, the hard part is in college athletics, right, what comes first? The support comes first. Unfortunately, in pro sports, the support doesn't have to become, come before the wins, Right, You can just jump on board when the Diamondbacks go play the season they played. When the Suns just go on a run, you can just jump on board. You can't do that in college athletics. The support is what allows you to ride the wave. So I think it got better than what it was in the prior years. But I think just the educating piece on what it takes to actually be a consistent winner in college athletics, especially when you're in a metropolitan city, Everybody who's associated with ASU has to take a little more ownership of it because there's so many other things to do, right? That's why metropolitan cities, I can't tell you the last time they won a national championship because there's so many other draws. If we want to get to where we go, we're heading in the right direction. The support's in the right direction. People are, in my opinion, getting there, but we just got to slowly get better and better and better. And that's why this is a process. I knew it was a process, but when we get there, when we get the support right, right, as we continue to build, when we continue to bring guys to this program who believe as we establish the culture, once this place gets rocking, it'll never fall again. Hey, Kenny, Jake Seymour, Thunderbolt Source. You mentioned that this senior class is the one to kind of build a foundation. What do, what are the other players have to do to kind of continue that movement and kind of finish off the, the house? Yeah, well, we have the standards now for just how you operate and try to win. Uh, I think we have to bring guys into the program. They have to teach those guys the standards of what it looks like. We have to then get enough depth by bringing guys in that we can practice. You know, that was, if I take one thing away from this year, the most disappointing thing was the inability to practice in season. We didn't get any better. We got worse. And I, it just pains me to say that out loud, is our football team from week six or seven got worse as the season progressed, because we were so banged up, we couldn't practice versus each other. And uh, that's unfortunate, because teams that I've been a part of take a lot of pride in uh, practicing in season and getting better in season. And, I, and we, just, we just didn't have enough bodies to, to do that and then field a team, which is the unfortunate part. So hopefully we get back to work in spring. We understand the physicality it takes carry that over in the fall, and then next fall our guys are physically ready to go through physical practices. And those physical practices will get us ready for fall so we can continue to build and be physical practices in fall camp. But that kind of takes time, I mean, in reality. So are, are some of these banged up? Is that because of the spring ball and the fall camp of physicality? Yeah, I think so. And did that help us in the first six, seven weeks? I mean, other than one game, we played pretty good football in the first six to seven weeks. Did we get banged up and tired and fatigued at the end of the year? Hell yes. Did that hurt us there? Yes. Foundation. It's the build, right? So you can't get mad because I do feel like we got fatigued at the end of the year and we got worn down and then we didn't get better because we couldn't practice. So a lot of negatives towards the end uh, that are going to be fixed as we continue to build the roster and teach our guys how to practice and what it takes to practice at a high level. Uh, ben Yates uh, Inferno Intel, like you said, there's a lot of negatives and some unfortunate things that happened throughout this season. But it being your first one, what are some positive things that you can take away with the highlights of your first season? Yeah, I mean, the highlights of year one, we won the same amount of games we won last year. Right? Through all the adversity that we faced, right? We didn't get worse. Through the craziest year I've ever been a part of, at, and I've coached Pop Warner, I've coached at a park seven minutes from here, and we faced more adversity in this game than when the lights wouldn't turn on at the park and you had to practice in the dark, right? We faced more adversity than that, and our guys didn't flinch. You go in the locker room, and I have, you have guys saying, oh, we're, we're, we're in the right direction. We believe. We believe in the direction we're going. So all of those things are the main purpose of year one. The main goal of year one is to achieve buy-in, to set a direction, to set a course. Uh, and nowadays in college football, everybody has their own vision for what they want. And some people want to go to a place and win now. 
how quickly can I win right now? Because, to be honest, they don't want to be there. Most coaches don't want to be at the job they have. Right? They want to get another job. So they're going to do everything that, oh, we have $2.5 million in NIL. Spend it all right now. Empty the bank load. I have to win this year so I can leave. That's how a lot of people operate. That is the opposite of how we're operating here because I want to build something that's sustainable. And even though that may hurt us early in the process, when it gets built, it's going to last. And it's, it's painful to sit up here and lose. I hate it. But even worse than losing would be in five years from now not having built it. Coach, coming off of his nine-week absence, how do you feel you could grade Jane Rashad's performance today? I know it's tough, kind of what he faced coming, to, coming into this game. Yeah, one thing that I'm really impressed, and I'm actually, he's better than what I thought he was uh, of high school tape, at uh, pocket movements, like just the ability to move around in the pocket and feel the pocket. I think he's better than that than I was anticipating, and to see him in another game just move around. Uh, Were well, there some things that, like, he comes out in the field and he's like, golly. Yes, he's a freshman in the third start, right? But did he deserve to start? Yes. Was he ready to start? Yes. Uh, so I so he made a great throw at the end there. Uh, we didn't have procedural penalties with a freshman in the game. Uh, you know, he operated the offense uh, fairly well. Were there a few things, like I said, that he'd like to have back? Of course, every quarterback does, and he's going to learn from, like, the one interception he threw, the – you know, the post safety is driving the climb now in one-eye defense, which they can do in man coverage because they're not in thirds. You see the guy down, oh, home run post. But for him, that's a learning experience because if it's cover three, you're going to throw the climb all day off the action. Being able to recognize, oh, safety's down, or, A, the nickel's attaching to the crosser. Oh, it's man, locate the post safety, he's down. Those things you can only get through just practice and reps. So I was happy with him. I mean, I'm happy with the direction he's gone. Uh, he's a sun devil. Uh, he's passionate about this place. And uh, I have a lot of confidence in uh, him moving forward. Yeah, Zach Tipton, Burn City Sports. Uh, Coach, this is the final game of the Pac-12. Uh, and what have you learned from facing you know, Pac-12 offenses in this incredible conference this year that will help you going into the Big 12 against brand new teams that most of the players and you have never faced before? A lot of good quarterbacks, a lot of good wideouts this year. I mean, this is arguably the best Pac-12 has been, I mean, in a long time, since the USC era of Matt Leinart and Reggie Bush, maybe. But I don't know if it was this deep. Uh, I think this is the – I think we faced a very, very, very difficult schedule when you truly look at it because how deep the Pac-12 is. And I think that's only going to, you know, callous us – moving forward, which is a good thing. You don't want things easy. Nothing in life easy is good. You want things hard. You want things gritty. You want things to be difficult. You don't love these moments, but they're actually good for you. They're good to feel the pain. It's needed in order to get to where you want to go.